Hey, you guys, I hope you all are doing well. I have another amazing guest, Professor Spira. He is a mucusless uh, PhD diet expert, author, and he is an educator. Um, yeah, he is amazing. I had his uh, have his book, um, and also I gave away one of his books a long time ago on my channel. Um, it has a lot of great information, so you guys can check him out uh, in the link below. So thank you so much for coming on our channel. Ah, it is a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So I like to ask, what in the beginning, what was your eating habits like? <laughs> so I ate pretty bad. So growing up, I overate and just started gaining more and more weight. And by the time I was a teenager, I could eat a whole large pizza to myself. One of the famous meals that I had regularly was I'd go to this root beer stand that had chili dogs. I'd have two foot longs with chili and cheese, a cheeseburger, a root beer, a root beer float and popcorn all in one meal wow. and do that a couple times a week. Uh -huh. And so, and in fact, for the, I got my, my little before and after. So at my heaviest, I was 300 pounds and suffered from daily migraine headaches, had uh, horrible allergies, had taken pharmaceutical medications for allergies since I was about seven years old, used to have uh, almost every month or so an ear and some kind of ear infection, just mm -hmm. all kinds of issues. And I, as I grew up, my parents, uh, well, my aunt and my grandma and my mom all had illnesses and my mom was in and out of the hospital constantly. And it got to a point where she, she ultimately, uh, well, first when I was, when I was 10, my grandmother passed away unexpectedly and she was the one I really had like a mother son bond with. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of really devastated me a week after she passed away my mom went into the hospital for, uh, from a heart attack and had a, a double bypass surgery and ultimately had her let both of her legs amputated from the knee down and she lived another year and a half and then passed away and i was told by doctors that i could expect that type of future but since this concept of genetic you know, passing down these things that I was going to have to suffer from the same issues that my mom and other family members had. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, we're conditioned to just respect and take in whatever the doctors are saying without questioning it mm -hmm. and the authority figures. But I really felt like there was something else that could be done that that the kind of suffering that we go through as humans when it comes to our health, as well as emotional issues and a lot of the just pain and suffering that we go through is not necessary. Yeah. That can't that are the re result of particular actions that we take and that could be reversed. And so that created a the impetus for me to go on a journey to really find out what is the source of human suffering? It's a question that many have asked, many philosophers or scientists or whoever have asked this question over the years. And I studied all, all of these different answers to the question or, or in different religious uh, traditions. You know, this is a question that has been dealt with a lot, but I've never, I hadn't found an answer that I really could get behind that really resonated with me until I came across a book called the mucusless diet healing system by an author named professor arnold Arrett. Mm -hmm. and once i read that book that then the lights started going off in my brain mm -hmm. then i started saying wait a minute okay it made total sense to me mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the suffering and why we suffer why we get so chronically ill Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's not by accident. It's not just a mishap or some kind of evolutionary flaw. It is the direct result of what we are putting into our bodies mm -hmm. from head to toe. Even when you get into things that people like to blame genetics on, well, mm -hmm. far enough back in the genetic line, 
you had somebody eating in a way that destroyed their body or destroyed their DNA, if you want to go in that with that conceptual route. So after I'd read the book, I uh, started getting into it immediately. And six months after having read the book, I'd lost 100 pounds. I overcame all of my allergies. I got off of the CPAP unit. Didn't mention that. They had me on the oxygen mask for sleep apnea when I was 18 years old. Uh, got off of all of that stuff. And that's literally what, what this picture was a year those two are taking a year apart. So that's 300 pounds suffering from all those ailments. And then six months after the picture's taken a year later, but basically six months after I had read that book and started to apply those principles, mm -hmm. I had uh, really made a profound transformation. And, uh, and so that then becomes the, the source of my inspiration to try and share this information share this knowledge with others as somebody was willing to do with me. You know, somebody, it, usually somebody has to show you this information or if you do get uh, sick and you start searching, you have to, there, it has to be uh, findable. <laughs> you know, the, the information has to be out there in such a way where you can find it if you are searching for it. And so that is my mission is to make this information available for those that are ready and those that are searching and know that something isn't quite right with mm -hmm. the way that our society functions and operates with the way that we've been conditioned to think about nutrition and to think about healing and to think about medicine and all those kind of things there is another way there is another route to go mm -hmm. Yes. So thanks for sharing that, your story. Thank you so much. Um, for those who don't know, uh, what is a mucusless diet? What what does that consist of? They, like the mm -hmm. basic overview. Yeah. So the, the mucusless diet is a, uh, is a uh, so the mucusless diet healing system. So that's the, the operative word healing system. So mucusless diet in itself would be uh, essentially fruits and green leafy vegetables or foods that do not degrade down into mucus in the body. So fruit, uh, uh, fat free and starch free fruits and vegetables are mucus free. And so though eating that you could say, well, I'm eating a mucusless diet. However, the most important element of the entire system, mucus diet healing system is the various components main which is transition dieting the transition diet methodology which a lot of people for some reason don't understand or ignore the transition diet then you have fasting that you would then systematically bring into the transition diet so you got transition diet fasting and then uh, I call it ancillary therapies. You have your, your sunbathing and your exercise and stretching and your breath work and any other naturopathic modalities that might be uh, n useful. You have your herbology and different things like that. But everything is housed within the context of the system. So it's not focusing so much on one thing because that's what I notice out here in a lot of these healing communities, they focus obsessively on one aspect. So they may focus on fasting and that's really in their diet might, when they eat, it's not, might not be that great, but they really do a lot of fasting or do long fast or while other people, they really focus on, well, it has to be hundred percent raw, you know, the raw food principle. Uh, but there might be eating a lot of mucus forming raw foods and you defeat the purpose. Uh, somebody else might focus on just uh, just the mute, just the mucus diet or even just the transition diet, but never get into the fasting, never get into uh, the uh, colon irrigation is one of the naturopathic methods that we like to use to help us get out nasty slime and sludge in the body. And uh, so the key is putting it all together. And so that's why the you know, mucus diet healing system. Put, putting all those different pieces together systematically is what is going, going to bring about the greatest change. 
Okay. I've heard you, I believe I heard you say that avocados are mucus forming. Is that on the mucus list? Yeah, yeah. So av avocados are definitely mucus forming. Now, the nuance that people have to understand is that not all foods are created equal. Not all mucus forming foods are created equally, just as not all cooked foods are created equal. It's not all just like it's all bad or it's all good. Mm -hmm. There are certain mucus forming foods that can be used and are recommended to be used for transitional purposes. Mm -hmm. And then it comes down to food combining. When you're combined properly, they eliminate a lot better. We use the word elimination in terms of not just digestion. We use the, the elimination as a catch all term for us for everything from physical eliminations to spiritual eliminations and mental elimination. But, mm -hmm. uh, but that becomes the most important thing that we really monitor and analyze is the degree to which any given food item eliminates well from the body or promotes cleansing and elimination from the body. So something like avocados, if it's somebody that's coming off of a pretty poor diet, you know, the standard anywhere diet or standard American diet, uh, mm -hmm. then having some big salads with some avocados or some nuts, other, any kind of nut, you know, some cashews or whatever on there. Uh, mm -hmm. And even some, uh, uh, some dressings, you know, that might have some oils in it or whatever that part it's transitioning. You're instead of having pizza and uh, Buffalo wings, you're having a big salad and maybe there's some mucus forming items on the salad. That's fine. <laughs> Not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're trying to heal yourself from something, you have a chronic ailment, you're really serious about healing it. Then now we're going to be a little more strict and say, well, until you feel better or until you're healed, let's leave that avocado alone. Let's leave the nuts alone. Let's leave the oils alone. Let's focus on 100% mucus free, focus on the juice therapy, focus on the fasting and the colon irrigation. You know, we do lemon juice and distilled water enemas as sort of our uh, ir irrigation uh, preference. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and th this is, I always had to show people the mucoid plaque image. This is what you're getting out when you're doing the lemon juice and still water enemas combined with the mucus's diet uh, mm -hmm. transition. You start seeing all this slime just pour out of your body. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, so that's where it's, it's a nuanced thing. So I just don't like, oh no, don't avocados, but it's something that you want to uh, bear in mind that it wouldn't be something you would want to eat forever you know, every day in perpetuity is like, you got a little period of time where it's something that's really helping you avoid eating something that's worse, or you're making dressings out of it or whatever, then that's, then that's cool. But you, you want to keep in mind that it is certainly mucus forming one way that you know, and uh, the, as you, as you start to clean yourself up, certain foods that you could tolerate before you will tolerate less, usually mm -hmm. the mucus forming food. And what you notice with avocados is, and you can notice with any mucus, most mucus forming foods, is they they eliminate slimy. So mm -hmm. imagine having a bowel move. You you ate a pound like half a pound of grapes, and and that was the only thing in your system. When you have the bowel movement, you're probably not going to have to wipe a lot. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it's it's gonna it's gonna eliminate clean. Mm -hmm. You eat an avocado uh, when you when you when it's time for that bowel movement, you're going to be wiping a little bit mm -hmm. you leave behind that slimy residue. Mm -hmm. And so and then that becomes from in a long term perspective, that becomes a problem is and when you're eating these mucus forming foods, some of it does digest some of the acids because all the people oh, when things are digested, the acids deal with it. It's broken down to a certain extent. But because of what it is, it's your body's unable to break it all down and it's unable to eliminate it all. So the residue of it starts to get on the lining of the intestines. And over years and years, you start to build up. Like think of a dirty pipe that's never been cleaned, like a kitchen pipe. Mm -hmm. And that would just get more and more residue. And you got people dumping 
you know, oils in and fat and all this debris. And eventually there's a line like this, this thick sludgy material that's on the lining of the, uh, of the pipe. Well, that's the same with our GI tract and our colon and intestines. You, we, uh, things just start to build up. And as it builds up, you get acidic, <clears throat> things slow down. Then your lymphatic system is not functioning as it should. It's not filtering. Your kidneys aren't filtering. Then you start to have the systemic problems that a lot of people start to experience and all of the symptoms that go along with it. And the thing is to keep in mind, whatever the symptom is, you can trace it back to that. You can trace it back to a filthy colon. You can trace it back to the uh, the constipation, cellular constipation. That's the result of eating these acid forming foods. So whether mm -hmm. you're talking about headaches, or you're talking about you got heart palpitations, you're talking about joint pain, you're talking about back pain, like all these different things. Uh, they you got to look look at the colon. Mm -hmm. you know, see how, how clean is that? Do you have 30 pounds of uneliminated? fecal matter you know or 10 15 20 pounds of uneliminated fecal matter and slime or decades old feces stones in the colon like all these different issues you mm -hmm. got to deal with that first you know before you start looking into all these other like oh i need these pills or let me go take all these herbs it's like well first clean yourself out and let's get to a baseline and that's some of what's taught this is uh my, my version of so this is the, the annotated edited and revised version of the mucus's diet healing system Mm -hmm. uh, my honor, Eric, that I took, uh, put out, but uh, Eric talks about that, the mm -hmm. that type of fasting. Instead of doing trying to do some long term fast, you do a short term fast, twenty four hour, forty eight hour. Do a few enemas while you're doing it, and get to a baseline. Your weaknesses are going to become very clear. They're going to come up to the surface, mm -hmm. where you're like, oh wow, what, you know, whether whether it's headaches or like whatever it is that you got to deal with, it's going to come up to the surface. And, yeah. and, uh, you know, and so this is all, everything I'm talking about is, are, is things that we, this should be everyday knowledge. Mm -hmm. This shouldn't be some, something special where you got to watch the podcast and <laughs> with professors. Like this is, this should be taught by, parents and passed down from grandparents and parents to their children and children are raised understanding when they get a little fever when they go through a lemon you know they go through an elimination we're not going to bring in a bunch of drugs and the Sudafed and the Robitussin we're going to you're going to be given an enema you're going to go lay down give maybe give you some fresh juices if needed but we're going to let your body go through the elimination as opposed to suppressing it which then caught which is what tends to be done if you go the medical route they give you drugs that'll suppress these eliminations mm -hmm. and now you're setting yourself up for serious chronic illness later in life which we don't want obviously mm -hmm. right. so uh yeah so this to me is kindergartner knowledge like this <laughs> stuff that is it really should be understood by children yes wow <clears throat> Um, and last, last year in October, well, after almost five years being, uh, vegan, raw vegan, um, I had a hiccup where I started back eating meat, trying to figure out my daughter issue and mine because I had lost over 200 pounds and mm -hmm. then it just stopped. And I'm like, what's going on? And I was playing with five, 10 pounds going up and down. It just, nothing was working for me. And then mm -hmm. her skin was flared up. Then I learned about histamines and she was eating avocados every day and mm -hmm. eating uh, the plantain or mm -hmm. the bananas. Right. And I'm like, I, I think you're eating too much and the, you know, eating this every day. I learned about histamines and I cut her back off of that and start her, like I said, her skin had flared up mm -hmm. and it was the avocados. It was the avocados and the oh, bananas yeah. that was causing her skin to do that. Um, and like, even today I'm getting out mucus <laughs> and this has been almost a year ago that I stopped eating meat again. So, 
um, and only did it like two months trying mm. to figure out what I'm going to do, you know, about my body. I didn't know what was going on, but yeah, it is real. Um, yeah. And that's why we always say this is a, a lifestyle mm -hmm. to incorporate and think about transition as a lifestyle because transition is is all around this. Everything is based on transition when you start to really hone in on that and you think mm -hmm. about the different seasons if you live someplace that has seasons. Uh, the, it doesn't just happen overnight. It just does, it's just, it doesn't go spring, summer, overnight. There's a an unending transition mm -hmm. and flow. There, when you are a baby, you go from being an embryo to being born to becoming an adult. That can't happen overnight. Right. For all the people that think that it, this is all mental and you can just think you're well, I don't know any being that has the capacity to use their brain to turn themselves from a baby into an adult overnight. Mm -hmm. It requires a certain amount of time. It requires a certain amount of trans of natural transition. That's just built in. It's built into our species and it's built into how we can transition back to a natural life. Mm -hmm. Uh, the the art is to align your to remember that you know to align yourself get yourself clean enough so that you can feel that mm -hmm. you can feel the transition you can as what's a little challenging sometimes at the beginning is because we have the food addictions that we have and the cravings and as we're cleaning ourselves out there's going to be cravings that come up for old foods might be stuff that we grew up with or things that we know we're not supposed to eat and the transition is really the key to the where because and in using the intellect and the methodologies to clean yourself up long enough to where you can start to have your intuition lead the way mm -hmm. because often because for most of us are when we begin this these kind of paths our intuition is compromised because our intuition is not only messed up on the physical level where we got all these poisons and stuff held in our body uh, and where it makes us crave the uh, the corn syrup based foods and uh, cocoa puffs and all there was whatever, you know, just all the McDonald's and, mm -hmm. you know, so we, we had the physical thing, but we also had the mental because they've have had significant mental warfare on us to, uh, orient us into this way of thinking about nutrition that serves the meat and dairy industries that serves the big food industries so these a lot of these concepts that i don't and some people have you believe what you want to believe you know i've done extensive research into the history of things like the calorie theory and the b12 theories and these different deficiency concepts and vitamin concepts and all these things and when you actually look at the history of them like the origin where did they come from where did the protein theory come from mm -hmm. uh you know Mulder and a guy named Francois Magendi who was a literal just psychopath oh wow that's you know that used to do these experiments on dogs you know where so our protein theory comes out of these sadistic experiments of starving dogs Hmm. starving dogs giving them different components to see what components would cause a dog to live longer than the others and they came up they reasoned that this nitrogenous substance was the thing that would keep this dog alive wow. uh, as they were fasting basically fasting it on water and from our perspective what you, what needed to happen was that it fast needed to slow down it essentially when the dogs would die they would drown in their own waste it's not that they didn't get all of the protein they needed or get, they didn't get all their nutrients it's like no you fasted it way too much to the point where it couldn't handle it and it drowned in its own waste it could no longer get oxygen and and, and if it's acidic yeah of course it's gonna get down real be skin and bones and that whole sort of situation mm -hmm. uh most people don't know that they just they're just where do you get your protein 
Yeah. I don't believe in the theory. <laughs> you know, because I because it just going back to that origin, they the name protein means first principle. Oh, wow. Pro meaning you know, first, team meaning principle. Mm -hmm. So the idea from the beginning of it was that this nitrogenous substance is the foundation of human life, mm -hmm. that we have to eat protein to create protein. But what kind of alchemy is that? The, the, the idea that and people actually take this serious, mm -hmm. that you can eat dead animal flesh and your body will, through the magic of alchemy, Mm -hmm. will keep you alive and will build your from from dead decaying flesh mm -hmm. you can act that it's this weird idea that you can build your body up from dead flesh like it's it's actually ridiculous when you look at it from an objective sort of standpoint you take yourself out of it and you're looking at it like yeah that is kind of like, why is that? Why would that be yeah. <laughs> new? Uh, because that was for so long. That's uh, what uh, they try to get you to believe. Like, oh, well, you, you need you need meat. Mm -hmm. you, you need protein. That's, that's the best source of protein. You, you got to you got to have it or you'll you'll be deficient and die. Mm -hmm. You know, and then then you have vegans that come along that try to adopt the nutritional theories that were made by meat eaters that wanted to uh psychopathic meat eaters that wanted to perpetuate their own diet where they looked at how they ate and said well this we eat the best in in the world that was that that eurocentric kind of outlook on life from the 1800s mm -hmm. and so they're like well we we eat the best so obviously this omni more omnivoric diet is is the best so they created an entire nutritional science around it. Mm -hmm. And that to this day is is fairly not people say, oh, it's changed a lot over the years. Not fundamentally. Mm -hmm. The fundamentals are there from the beginning and different where there's yeah, there's things that's changed, but not not the fundamentals, not this idea of you you're going to die if you don't you know get all of what whatever all, all these different constituents in. The paradigm shift where we're coming from is where what we found is it's not about getting all of these different substances and these micronutrients and all this stuff. It's about eliminating anything that's unnecessary out of the body so that the body can actually use oxygen as best as it could where you can truly absorb and utilize the oxygen that we breathe mm -hmm. at the highest levels that our bodies can because most most people don't right. you know, most people are they're, they're not clean enough to be stimulated by their breath or mm -hmm. to be to, to function on fruit or fruits mm -hmm. and green leafy vegetables again that's why I'm, i always preach nobody preaches transition diet harder and more than me right right but it is helpful to understand and see the human body from a fruit giverous standpoint that the human body is designed as a fruitarian system at it really as as a second depending on how deep you get that'd be the secondary system mm -hmm. our eating system if we are to eat at all from a in, in an ideal situation it would be fruit biologically we're fruit eaters Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not telling anybody to just go eat nothing but fruit and I'm saying read the book and get into the transition. You're going to be eating plenty of foods for a long time. Yeah. Uh, but when you but when you do understand why it, it we heal when we eat fruit, if we get up, if we're sick or we're going through something, you put yourself on a fruit fast. There's a reason why that works, because that's who we are. Mm -hmm. We're going back home. <laughs> when we do that, yes. and even if it be for a temporary period of time. Mm -hmm. And so these uh, these principles are are important. That's something that I'm real passionate about is getting getting people to really rethink and question these nutritional theories and these uh, all these different concepts. You got the at water calorie theory. You look up the history of calorie theory. You uh, read read his book. His, his stuff is out there the the Atwater from 
it's the uh, early 1900s. It's like thing nine nine uh, nine hundred was that nineteen oh five or something. It's like wow. in that. But it, it but his you read it and it's and his stuff is super lame. Just like this is ridiculous. So they're he created this thing called a calorie meter and they just put random food in there and it incinerates it and then you weigh the ash <laughs> and then depending on how heavy that ash is that's how that's the calories <laughs> and, and we relate that to the body as like well if you you know calories in calories out then you, you burn a certain amount of calories so you need to get your 2000 calories a day or whatever they literally just created this entire junk science concept mm -hmm. based on something that can 100% just be put right in, you can just put the whole thing in the trash, in my opinion. Some yeah. people, some people are, even in our community, they'll be like, well, it's not all bad, you know, the cal, you know, I'm just like, to me, that's one of those things we can discard because it's not, it's not helpful. Yeah. Uh, it's not really help, in my opinion, it's, it's not a helpful way to look at how the human body operates. That's mm -hmm. not how elimination works. So there is a big difference between because uh, then they because they it's a failed and a flawed theoretical framework then they start trying to make up stuff with like well you know not all calories are the same because then that's one of the problems with it where the calorie is like if it's just about a number then okay well let me get all my calories from doritos can i get all my calories <laughs> from ice cream or are all calories the same is it just yeah. calories and it, like right. no it, it's it's all bad it's just it's a failed it's a failed theoretical framework but they because marketers are able to use it mm -hmm. and there's people that are making money or nutritionists and folks that go to school and get their degrees and that's what they're taught so they they're going to do their best to perpetuate the theories and mm -hmm. uh, and to keep it going but it's really a, wa a waste of time in my opinion it was, would be better if we were going to quantify anything, it would be interesting sometime in the future for people to be able to quantify a, like a mucus quotient. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how much if, if you degrade a particular item down like this loaf of bread or this piece of bread, how, how much liquid slime <laughs> would be would would result from this piece of mucus food? Right. That would be that would be interesting. But you know even that's not necessary that would just be interesting but this uh yeah this calorie fad is definitely run its course i'm ready for that i'm ready for that one to, to, to <laughs> mm -hmm. yes uh, so also with the b12 that's also wrapped up into what you were just talking about yeah so yeah that's a, it's another one of these the the, the fear-mongering that goes along with it because that it's like oh if you got to get your if you don't get this you're you're going to be deficient you're going to go through and what happens is people people start going through a lot of symptoms and so as you're healing yourself you're cleaning yourself out there are any number of symptoms and side effects and things that you're going to go through on that journey it it mm -hmm. is what it is we're trying to reconstruct our bloodstream mm -hmm. heal our blood like clean See, that's the the real, the really what we want. We want the clean, clean blood. Who's got the cleanest blood like that? Not who has a Bugatti and who has the, 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 the finest jewelry. Who has the cleanest blood? That is that should be the most valued thing in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, but, you know, it, it, but instead they're they'll do the blood test and again the, the these tests are based on people that are eating a lot of pus and mucus forming foods mm -hmm. and so and they'll look and they'll say oh, okay your levels uh, you know they're basing everything off of the these level theories which again problematic theories uh mm -hmm. now with blood tests there, there's certain there is data i'm not saying to totally throw those out like i am with the calorie there there's some data in there that can be helpful if if you need to get access to it but you still don't need it to heal yourself now and they go through and they say oh doc you know i'm really fatigued and this and that and then they, they take in like oh your, your b12 level is pretty low so let's let's get you stimulated like here's a b12 shot here's some b12 whatever and you're good to go and then the person oh yeah okay wow yeah i'm feeling feeling better <laughs> instead from a naturopathic standpoint we want to say okay well first if you're fatigued 
let's let's look at the constitutional waste that you're carrying around your colon let's take a look at are your kidneys filtering properly what's going on with your adrenal glands and your endocrine system overall examine the functionality and because often what happens yeah you're it's in the beginning too you're going to have a period where you might be weak you might be tired have detox symptoms and if you have weakened adrenal glands then that could result you could experience a more chronic form of fatigue a lot of people though they'll, they'll get a lot more energy just from cleaning themselves out but if you don't then you might need to do some things that would address specifically pinpoint and address the adrenal glands or if you have some thyroid issues or, or these kinds of things and uh so that is really the problem in my opinion you know when you it, when the a lot of the things that people will blame on deficiencies those symptoms are related to physiological issue because the symptoms are real mm -hmm. the question is why are they there really so in the medical field and in that nutrition concept field it's they just try to throw they throw stuff at it you know it's like well here here take these b12 here's a vitamin pill uh you know vitamin d mm -hmm. pill here's a lot of vitamin c you know take they just throw that kind of stuff at it as opposed to again the elimination paradigm of well let me clean my colon out really good let me fast a couple days let me get myself to baseline and then evaluate from there and if i need to do something about my endocrine system or glands you know that's where the, the <clears throat> herbs are very helpful in my opinion for those kind of things mm -hmm. uh and, and now you're on the naturopathic uh, uh journey but but yeah so and i got an article on mucusfreelife.com on my website where and it's also my book sphere speaks uh there's there's a whole section where i break down the b12 theory even a little more in detail where i go through the history of it and examine it and really analyze it through this lens but uh but yeah i just found it it's, it's one of those things where again they they tell you you have to and any anytime they start saying you have to do such and such i i have to question it like well are are you sure because i know people that haven't had any kind of b12 you know anything that would have the the, the traditional b12 stuff for over 40 years you know 50 years you know people that's practicing mucus diet for a long time mm -hmm. and uh and then myself for 21 years uh you know it's it's, it's one of these things that uh, yeah the, yeah these nutrition theories and these vitamin theories this I, I, this chemical isolate wanted wanting to isolate the chemistry and think that that's something your body's going to benefit from and where you can just take off you're not getting enough because because if that was the case then we we wouldn't need food at all just you could just live on pills <laughs> okay just on you know vitamin c okay let me get my vitamin c get this my soil and green let me drink that protein <laughs> shake and this and that and it's like uh nah, you know there's just a lot of a lot of problems but when you start thinking from the perspective of elimination you know in the mucus diet book arnold Eret puts forth his theory of vitality equals power minus obstruction which that same principle can be applied to anything so if you think of an uh an engine in a car mm -hmm. if you put sand instead of gasoline in a car that's supposed to run on gasoline mm -hmm. the, that car is going to be ruined it's going to die it's going to be messed up because it's it's a gasoline car gas is supposed to be in there mm -hmm. not sand right. Eric says and this is one of the huge you know groundbreaking concepts that he brought to the table is that the human body is an air gas engine mm. now you would think everybody that that would be like yeah of course and when you hear it you're like well yeah but nobody thinks about it like that like yeah. wait because we can go days without food mm -hmm. you know everybody has a, a different length of time now people in our community have gone long periods of time without food much longer than their books say you're supposed to be allowed 
without dying and we're thriving. Mm -hmm. uh, now I don't promote long-term fasting. I'm just saying we've, right. we've done enough to disprove anything they have in any of their books. Mm -hmm. They being, you know, in the medical establishment and all the, these kind of people. Mm -hmm. But um, everybody knows you, you can go a few days without food and you're mm -hmm. not going to die. Mm -hmm. You can't go five minutes or 10 minutes without air, mm -hmm. without breathing oxygen. Yes. So air is the most important thing in our life. And it's the thing most people think the least about unless they've gotten into some breath work principles mm -hmm. and things like that. But yeah, breathing is everything. You know, he would, I, I, my, my quote, he who hath breath hath everything. You know, that, that everything is about that breath. Mm -hmm. And when you start looking what, when we start to have problems is when our breath is being obstructed in some way mm -hmm. in the body, uh, whether it's, it's acid waste or it's big clumps of mucus or it's a stagnating lymphatic system. Constipation is the foundation of all of our ailments. The first thing that Arnold Ehret says in the Mucus's Diet book is that uh, every disease, no matter what name it is known by medical science, is constipation, a clogging up of the entire pipe system of the human body. Mm -hmm. Right there, we have the best description of the foundation of human illness and mm -hmm. disease. And then he offers the solution, which is remove the obstruction, remove the constipation. Mm -hmm. And you're going to, your body will heal itself mm -hmm. uh, when put in the right circumstances, cleaning the terrain, as it were, the, I, the, you know, the, the terrain concept of having a clean vessel. If you have a filthy vessel, then you open yourself up to all kinds of problems, mm -hmm. all kinds of little bacteria and infections and critters and all that kind of stuff that's going to come in the tapeworms and all that stuff you become a great vessel for the, these kind of filthy parasites. Mm -hmm. And as you clean yourself up, you, you're no longer a great vessel or a host for the nasty parasites. They don't, they don't, if somebody is drinking lemon juice and drinking fresh juice every day and doing enemas and eating these mucus free salads. Mm -hmm. there's, there's nothing that wants to stay in you. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> right. You know what? Yeah. That. Yes. Yeah. We need you in every city so that <laughs> if you could just travel <laughs> and just go to it, because we need you. I'm serious. And can you hold the second book up? Because I haven't seen that mm. one. And is that one on Amazon or is it on your website only? Yeah, this is on Amazon. So, so I got seven, there's seven books that we published total. Here's a couple of the other. So these are uh, books that were that Arnold Eret wrote that became out of print. You got the definite cure of chronic constipation, the uh, thus speak at the stomach. So the, the books seem small, like they're pamphlets, but the information is so packed in. It's so dense. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a good one. Uh, the physical fitness through spirit, uh, spiritual uh, sub or superior diet. And then, of course, the classic rational fasting. And then I have this book. Whoop. I have this book called Spears Notes, which is uh, this is basically like an outline of everything from the Mucus's Diet book. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's like Cliff's Notes or something, where it's just everything is broken down and summarized. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, but all seven of these books are available either from we got the book bundle on mucusfreelife.com where you can get them all for you know, a cheaper price or go to Amazon and you could find my, uh, you can type it in or if you type in Professor Spira, I should pop up and all, all of those books are available there. Okay, I have the green one. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And that's the first one that everybody, if there's one to get first, that's definitely the one that you want is, uh, yeah, the mucus diet healing system is the foundation. And then uh, all the other the other ones are real helpful. So I, I call this a life where people it's not a diet book, it's a lifestyle book. So we this this is kind of dynamic where it goes into all these different areas and avenues in terms of the uh, uh, 
uh, it, there's a lot, a lot of dialogues where I'm working with people and breaking things down and all of the typical questions that come up, whether it's B12 or how long should I fast and how do I deal with doing enemas if I have, if I live in a place with other people and, mm -hmm. uh, and I want to try to keep to myself or, you know, just all these different like real life things that you had to deal with when you're trying to practice this lifestyle there's they got poetry in there so it's just sort of a, a compilation of a lot of a lot of different things and um but yeah yeah okay cool um <clears throat> it was something i was you know back in the days probably right before my time like a little bit between a little right before my time of mm -hmm. me in the beginning of my time I noticed um, people would say they would get them enemas when they would go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Like that would be the first thing they would do. You, you heard that before? Like, yeah. They, well, yeah. It was funny. I, I I actually wrote that today to somebody that they're they're rare now, but mm -hmm. yet yeah, once upon a time that would be as common as getting a saline drip. Mm -hmm. you, know, you go go to the emergency room, get a quick enema, then they give you the saline drip. Mm -hmm. that that kind of thing but yeah that and so that would today that would be a more forward thinking er that would do mm -hmm. something like that but mm -hmm. uh but yeah no that that was i mean that's what should that's what it should be you know that should be the practice is you in emergency situation mm -hmm. generally that the, depending on what the situation is mm -hmm. uh then yeah you, you know go ahead and flush that colon out you know, there, there are some things that we could give them a little better than the saline drip, but mm -hmm. that that's, uh, you know, they, they don't know, <laughs> they don't know that they don't know any better, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, no, that, that's the, that's the thing. Yeah. The enema therapy is, is crucial in my opinion for the condition that we're in mm -hmm. as, as humans, because we're, we're in such a, uh, dire straits. And then people want to say, well, you know, enema is not, it's, is that natural? I thought you were all about things being natural. I'm saying, well, we ate so unnatural for so long, we need to use any rational tools that we can mm -hmm. to help aid our body in this transformation. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> then look at it from this perspective, what's more natural to get cut on by a surgeon Hmm. to have something taken out or messed with in your body hmm. or just a, a little lemon water in your rectum in your colon just just clean out it's kind of like you, you brush your teeth and you get the bacteria off your teeth and get the you know floss and you just general hygiene hmm. this is colon hygiene where it's just like let's get that slime off of there because Mm -hmm. the, there's this ascendancy of colon cancer over the past what 10 15 years Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that, because what causes if you want to get into that concept, I mean, what causes cancer or damaged cells? Mm -hmm. It's not grapes. It's going to be acids in the body and, mm -hmm. and, and that putrid, nasty waste that collects down there. Of course, that it makes sense that there would be increased amounts of colon degeneration. Yeah because the, these acids are are everywhere in the mm -hmm. body and and it's and then it gets systemic and that's when things start shutting down mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it's important to to understand the different functions of the organs and the glands but then always step back to see the the body as a whole mm -hmm. it's all connected so if you if you get try to zone in on one thing and you're not you don't see how other th things are being affected, mm -hmm. then you're not going to be able to heal, your, heal yourself as well. You might stumble upon it. Some people accidentally heal themselves just because they lose their appetite and they'll fast for a few days. And then, oh, and they'll and it, maybe they take some pills with it and they'll say, oh, these pills really worked. No, you, you didn't yeah. eat anything. You were fasting <laughs> yeah. just because you're, it was like a forced fast where your body was forced to fast. You didn't feel like eating anything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so those principles are, again, these are things that I really want children to know. Young people should know this stuff. This isn't, shouldn't be rocket science and that kind of thing. This, this really should be everyday knowledge and wisdom that 
everybody is everybody's birthright to have it to yeah. understand this and, and the body works the way the body works mm-hmm. you know and, and people because for, for whatever reason when it comes to the the soft tissues and different degenerative pathological issues with the body people don't think that they that the body can heal it mm-hmm. they don't know what the prerequisites are they haven't been educated but they, they but that's been the belief system that's been put out there that to, to keep us depending on the medical field mm-hmm. but when you break a bone you take a bunch of medication <laughs> to to heal that now you might take pain medication but mm-hmm. you there's that i know of there's no particular drug that's common that they would say okay if you don't take this your bone will not heal <laughs> or it, it's and, and this is where it is it's helpful to have a doctor around that knows how to set something so mm-hmm. yeah if i break if i break a bone i'm gonna go i'm gonna go in mm-hmm. get it set set me up and then i'm gonna get out of here <laughs> you yes. know <laughs> yes so it's helpful like to yeah have a person that can set something for you mm-hmm. and um but that's the extent of it because then i'm gonna start fasting and mm-hmm. it's gonna heal way faster than if i was sitting here eating a bunch of mess yeah and so because the body heals itself the bones come back together on their own it, again if you can't be because then when there's people that have trouble healing or it, it hurts or their chronic pain ends up being there from they have a, something that was broken and then it, and it never really quite healed well mm-hmm because they're too acidic they're too constipated uh and so the you didn't give the chance a body the 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 body a chance to heal it Mm -hmm. and so again these are these principles that folks don't really understand that where you could take something that would take weeks to heal you could heal it in a few days with the with the right type of fasting Mm -hmm. and so and, and this is all you know, everybody has access to this as long as there's not if you don't wait too long, Mm because sometimes people will come to me and it's a little too late in terms of their I mean, you can you can at any point you can always try you can go start going down the path. But the problem is a lot of people wait a little too long. And I call it the point of no return to where once you get into a certain space with your body and your situation, you might be in this point of no return type of situation where mm-hmm. the fat the fasting isn't helping the way that it would have five years ago the changing of your diet at that point isn't helping the way that it might have five years ago and so i just encourage people do it now you know like wherever you're at if you're 80 years old or you're eight years old whatever your age is you're never going to have a better time to start this than right now mm-hmm. you know yeah Yes. Do you um, do virtual calls? Like, do you handle people also virtually? So what I've been doing the past couple of years, I've built a coaching program and I, I have an e-course that has a coaching component. And then a couple times a year, I have a, a really intensive coaching program where we do a, we, you know, we do the coaching calls and accountability calls and, uh, 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 you know, really detailed work. Uh, kind of one-on-one so I don't do where you uh, right at least right now I don't do kind of the hourly thing where you could pay a certain amount and work you know I I because what I at one point I was going to make uh, almost make it a requirement to go through the e-course first because the the e-course it, it has everything that you need to know there's so much just that that basic information mm-hmm. that that is is going to be way more helpful like if you come to me with questions after you have that basic Mm -hmm. stuff down you're going to get so much more out of it than when people you know don't have just read the book or really hadn't been doing too much and then then get a consultation and so it's like uh, so i've tried to create these avenues where people can really thoroughly become educated on this and experienced and then on top of that the the community support so that was that's been the element that we've been bringing in the accountability partnerships and the community support we just opened up our uh mucus uh, mucus free social which is our private social platform 
And that's something that uh, we haven't announced it out too widely yet. But it, and people that are in there, are folks that are in the e-course and stuff like that. But uh, that's something that we've put in place to try to help people where where the it's it's an actual community of people helping each other. Mm -hmm. And so that that's been my vision to, to try to create that that type of dynamic mm -hmm. to, to, to be able to help more people. Mm -hmm. OK, that's great. And you also is a musician. I seen you jamming a couple of times. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that's an, yeah, an important piece that, that comes to mind there is I always tell people to uh, follow your passion. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> there's the old philosophical maxim of know thyself. Yes. So for, so to know what you're passionate about, first, you, you got to know something about yourself and be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. But when you find that passion uh, to to don't get scared to do it, yeah. figure out how to make it work. Because mm -hmm. society has this tendency of scaring everybody into submission. We're mm -hmm. like, you know, oh, don't you just, those dreams and uh, you can't really own your own business. Just just work here at this factory. Mm -hmm. We already have a job for you. You don't have to do anything. You just have to show up and and and, and do the work and, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. And it's like, no, you know, what, whatever you need to do, you want to put yourself in a position where you're doing what you're passionate about. And I feel so blessed to be, and, and this is how I, I have people think about this, think about it like this. Uh, what did you really enjoy doing when you were a young child? Mm -hmm. When you would play, what did you gravitate toward? So some people, you know, uh, some people were care, they displayed uh, attributes of being caretakers. They loved their little dolls. They like to dress the doll and clean, and clean it up and give it a little bath. And, you know, now it's going to make some great parents mm -hmm. or caretakers or folks that would work in a nursing home or whatever, that type of person. When I was young, I enjoyed being on stage. I am, I, even if I wasn't in front of people, I imagined that I was in front of thousands of people performing. Mm -hmm. uh, I would play little music things. I had a Fisher Price tape recorder. And I would record my own little radio shows. <laughs> wow. So I'm doing the adult versions today of what I did when I was a child that, that I was passionate about. Because I just did these. No one's paying you. No one's paying me to do any of that. I did it because I. it's what gave me life. It's what gave me that spark and was fun. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so I think we would be a much happier society <laughs> if we... <laughs> And there's more people that had the courage to really follow that to figure out how to make it work. Yeah, there's a little creative thought that has to go into because uh, the other thing I did when I was young, I used to I had this thing my aunt bought me called my first business mm -hmm. and I played business. Wow. So I played being an entrepreneur and I would I would sell things like little imaginary things to my grandma and my aunt. And I would, had I, <laughs> I turned the, the table over. And I pushed it, acted like it was like a cart, like I had my wares on this table. And uh -huh. I took it over and uh, go by my grandma and she she would make an order like, I want this. And then I would act like I'd hand it to her and she'd <laughs> give me imaginary money. And, then I, you know, yes, play, that's let's play. Yes. I, I now have a business and I and it's the grown up version of that, <laughs> now, yeah. you know, and so that's something that. uh yeah, when I when I talk to people that are really happy, they uh, I notice that what they're doing today, oftentimes, is some version of something they did when they were young. I was talking to somebody who's a journalist, and when they were young, they they were one of those little kids that loved to ask questions. They wanted to know everything, like how things worked, why people thought the way they thought. So they just ask a lot of questions all the time. They're a journalist today, you know. Mm -hmm. That's what they're passionate about. And so, um, so yeah, so just when, as I was, when you brought up my music, that was a, that was a huge key in my success practicing the mucus's diet is, uh, and, and my ability to get people to think about the diet in terms of an art form, as opposed to this 
this science, this sort of weird fake scientific thing that we've been oriented toward. Like it all has to be science. It all has to be, well, you got to count this and your macros and this kind of stuff. I'm like, this is an art form. Yes. Each person's body is different. Mm -hmm. And so we can all use the same method book. Like when you're learning music, you can have several children that are using the same exact method book, but the way that they play, the way that they actually bring whatever is in that method book to life is going to be different because each one of them is different. Their body, their lips aren't the same. Mm-hmm. They're not the same height, their arm length or all that kind of stuff. So we can all have the same and understand the same principles and methodologies, mm-hmm. but we're going to have to, apply them differently to our lives, to our personalities, to who we are, to our, our physiologies, to our past, like, you know, every, everybody's real different. So to me, that is a good definition of an art form, Mm -hmm. because if it was this true sort of science concept, then it could all just be done by numbers. (laughs) That's what they try to do with the medical. We were talking about the blood work. They, Mm -hmm. they'll look at your blood work and they look at mine. And they're looking at it like it's the same blood and the same situations. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, these are very different people. Yes. And, and, and so we need to deal with the person mm-hmm. as opposed to the numbers that are on a page. Right. Yes. <clears throat> Do you think everyone should be vegan, plant-based? And, and, and do you think, uh, like, um, is cooked food acidy? And I'm asking you like three p- questions. Mm. So, uh, so the, well, the first with the, with the so no, not all cooked food is created equal. So, not all cooked food is acidic. Not all cooked food is, is mucus free. These mm-hmm. are concepts that are kind of dogmatic concepts that that certain people in raw foods community has. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and they're, I find them to be problematic. And I work with a lot of a ex raw foodist or aspiring raw foodist that didn't understand or know anything about the transition. Okay. And so they'll go and they'll be, okay, I'm hundred percent raw. Cause there's different forms of raw foodism too. When you're talking raw foodism, but most of the raw foodism that's outside of the scope of mucus free raw it has quite a bit of mucus forming foods in there Mm -hmm. and eventually that can catch up with the person or there's some raw foodists that they that will take enzymes because instead of cooking certain things that would help it eliminate a little better they they just they want to be 100 raw and so they'll eat certain things that really don't eliminate well i mean there's certain raw vegetables that that are really we shouldn't eat without Mm -hmm. It, you could eat it, you know, without cooking them a little bit to to break down the uh, to break the starch down. And, and in the mucus diet, Eric says that it's it's not that cooking in itself is wrong. It's it, it's all about how you cook it and, and what you're cooking. Mm-hmm. So if you're cooking something that actually improves its ability to aid your body in elimination, then that's what you want to do. So something like uh some cooked greens some cooked collard greens now we're not going to sit there and cook it <laughs> like you know we ain't gonna you know, like cook it for eight hours or something <laughs> in the, it, but 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 you want you want it enough you don't want to overcook it but you mm-hmm. want it cooked enough where it's going to become a nice really slide through the body and you want to always combine the cooked vegetables with some kind of raw like you know the, the raw salad so my rule is big raw salad and then some kind of cooked mucus free vegetable Mm -hmm. and so you have things like your baked squashes baked acorn squash baked zucchini Uh, you can steam a lot of stuff there's all these different things that can really help you along your transition because they're they're mucus free but they're satiating you know they're kind of they they really hold you down then you have this which which is really something that only we really do and understand how to use it in a healing context is the cooked fruit 
So you have the baked fruit, like baked banana surprise is one of my recipes. I had uh, baked apples or you can make applesauce out of the baked app. These things are mucus free, mm -hmm. but they're all they're excellent for certain transitional purposes because they're less aggressive. If you take somebody that's brand new and you're like, well, just eat these raw grapes and have this raw salad sooner or later, that person is probably going to lose their control and they're going to go eat a bunch of mucus. They're going to go have a bunch of cooked meat, mm -hmm. you know, because they haven't transitioned that stuff out of their system yet. Mm -hmm. But you get that same person baked banana surprise and or even like a two course meal. You had the baked banana surprise. They could wait 15 minutes, then have, have a salad and some baked zucchini. You know, later in the day, you could have, have another salad or something like when you're eating you know, really eating hearty, then uh, you put yourself in a position to progress your transition. Mm -hmm. You're going to, you're going to, because you're, you're not going to crave the, 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 the things that are is bad and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and have those relapses in the same way that you would, if you're, you're trying so hard to just, ah, I just want to be hundred percent raw and this and that. And even, uh, you know, cause one of the things that's, to, to put the question you asked earlier into perspective that is controversial uh, you know, in some circles, but like I sometimes say, I would rather somebody eat uh, and I'm unequivocal with it. Cause I'd rather see somebody eat cooked mucus free foods combined with a raw salad. When you're talking about, you know, cooked greens and cooked uh, spinach or cooked, whatever acorn squash, I would much rather see somebody eat that combination and be a hundred remain a hundred percent mucus free mm -hmm. versus have uh, eat several avocados in one sitting mm -hmm. you know, or, or all of some of these the things where they put all these nut like the nuts and the dehydrator, all the like the nut, all these crackers and all this kind of stuff. Now you could use some of that for transitional purposes, but when you're relying on it as your main stuff where you're a bunch of avocados, a bunch of nuts and seeds, uh, that kind of stuff, you're going to run into problems sooner or later. You're, you're going to have the same, it might take a little longer, but that those same obstructive issues are, are going to happen even with the, the raw foods. If you're having raw mucus forming foods. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> when you say you know, should everybody, what I say is what I would love, I would love everybody to get on the transition diet. Mm -hmm. And because see the, the transition diet puts you in the driver's seat mm -hmm. where you can experience all of these, these different, it's like these different levels or different modes. It's like a gear in a car. You don't always want to be in fourth gear. You know, sometimes you, you know, be in third gear, you know, you start in first gear, you want to be able, and then sometimes you hit the gas and you ease off the gas, hit the brake. You want to be able to drive your transition like that. Yes. So you go a period of time where you're hundred percent raw and mucus free. Mm -hmm. you know, and maybe you do a two day fast and you break the fast properly. Uh, Cause that's, you know, a fast is only as successful as how well you were able to break it. You know, as you break fast successfully, then you come back, then you, then you might go through a period of mucus lean, cooked mucus lean, where you're eating things that people would even be surprised that I would say, yeah, you can eat that on the transition. Uh, so you or you're eating those kind of things. And when you take your body through this process, you, you that's how you really change your physiology permanently. Mm -hmm. It's not where because you it wasn't something you tried to do overnight or you tried to do like one fast and just get it all together it's like no you you really therapeutically allowed your body to go through those changes and and adapt to those changes to the point where like that's just how you eat now mm -hmm. now you're you're just mucus free and uh so i would love to see everybody get into the transition diet that would yes take them away from the meat and the dairy. And I used to call the mucus's diet healing system, the original vegan diet. Then I started calling it the original plant-based diet just because those terms were popular. But, uh, but it, but it's also true because it was the first the term vegan was coined 
uh, I think it was like 1944, Donald Walt, uh, Watson, uh, uh, somewhere around there. But mm-hmm. the Muse's Diet book was written in 1920 through 22. You know, the, there's instances of it. You can see 1920. And so it was one of the earliest, if not the earliest, widely disseminated plant-based book. They didn't use the word plant-based uh, or that, you know, the, and, and the, the term vegetarian, you look at the history of the word vegetarian, which predated vegan, that uh, originally the word vegetarian and meant what vegan means today or, or meant in 1944. Mm-hmm. But there was all these arguments in the vegetarian societies. And these were like European and U.S. vegetarian societies that sort of acted like academic societies. And so it was all you know, you didn't have access. It was only the, the, the elites that were in there and they had their little journal. And, uh, but you can read through this stuff in that late 1800s, all these arguments for there, there was the, the vegetarians that didn't want to include, they wanted it to all be plant matter. They didn't want to include dairy and cheese then, but then all these, these other vegetarians were like, no, we, we need, we want to include cheese and dairy and then thin fish, a few of them. And so they literally argued about this for a long time and the, uh, the, the, the cheese people won. <laughs> so that ostracized the folks that really wanted to do true vegetarianism, which is like vegetable plant-based. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then Watson in 1944, he just coined a whole different word. He's like, We're, okay, vegan. Well, uh, I'm, I'm going to just make up a new word. And yeah. that's going to be like what the vegetarian used to be. And then he brought the animal welfare consciousness to it. And so then that, you know, where that, that word and that thing came from. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, I, mean, I think what has to happen though, the unfortunate reality is at this point in history, there's a lot of people, we're going to lose a lot of people because they're not going to get it. They're not ready. Their karmic situation is in such a way where they're, they're not going to resonate with this information, even if it's like right in front of their face, it makes so much sense. They just, they're not going to be able to see it and perceive it, you know? So we just have to kind of have love for them and let them, let them play out what, what they want to play out. But Mm -hmm. for those that are able to hear, you know, that are able to see, then, uh, you know, we're here and, uh, and and the transformation is definitely going to happen because I think this, this, will fundam- fundamentally transform humanity. Mm-hmm. This is the answer that people are searching for, whether they know it or not, when it comes to human suffering, when it comes to the question of why do people do things that are bad? Mm-hmm. Why do why are there people that go and, and murder large numbers of people? You know, go to a church and murder some, you know, a bunch of people or a school or, uh, uh, you know, all these different things that cause people to ask the question, what were they thinking? Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with what were they thinking. Hmm. It had everything to do with what they were eating. Yes. You know, and so that once that becomes understood and that becomes the consciousness, then we're going to, you know, humanity will have now be in a good position. There'll be a lot of that change. But to get to that, Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of what we're going through now is 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 making this information more widely available, mm-hmm. creating those communities for ourselves to, just so we can support ourselves and protect ourselves out here in this bizarre world, nut nuttyville out here. Yeah. When you start to really open up to this stuff and your consciousness raises, mm-hmm. you we always say that society is fueled by and based on pus and mucus mentality is run by people that are addicted to eating pus and mucus forming foods with it, which are the most destructive foods to one's body, mind and spirit. Wow. So I used to say if, uh, an interesting SAT question would be in a joint con- in a joint session of con- uh, of Congress where everybody, all of our, our lawmakers are all in one building uh, estimate the amount of uneliminated fecal matter, how many pounds of uneliminated fecal matter are in that room? Wow. 
and now you got you you see what's making decisions yeah that's actually has bearing on our lives yeah it's feces infused people constipated irrational people Mm -hmm. that are making decisions that affect our lives and for us that's unacceptable but there's not a whole lot we can do yet at mm-hmm. this minute other than clean ourselves up because that's the one thing that they can't control and right. they try you mm-hmm. know, they, and they try they've tried to control the past couple of years saying you need you need this like no i don't want that stay away <laughs> from me uh but yeah they that, that's the one thing that you no matter what you you can control what you're putting in your body and as we say the most revolutionary thing that you can do is to learn how to control what you put in your body mm-hmm. yeah and so this is very much is a revolutionary act and mm-hmm. a revolution to learn how to control what you put in your body and to uh gain control because it, it's about control to control be able to control yourself to control mm-hmm. and understand what these foods do to you and for you mm-hmm. and uh, and to control all of it that's that leads to the liberation that i'm interested in and we mm-hmm. talk about physiological liberation mm-hmm. not 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 walking around scared i've been it's been sad because i just noticed the past several days even uh when i go out to the supermarket is all all of a sudden out of nowhere all these people are wearing masks again and 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 they walk around in such fear you know they're just just they, they're, they're just their body language it's like they're they're scared of they're just so scared and it's like ain't nothing gonna we're in a in a whole foods what, what why are you scared in here like you know, nothing, <laughs> you know there's nothing there's nothing going but but that's the the submission mm-hmm that we've been put in into as a society you know we've been beat down into submission of many many people yeah they're, they're that that have uh lost their that that passion that lost that spark mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that are very uh i was talking about this yesterday i'm noticing that 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 spark that light that you would used to see in a lot of people just on the streets like I, it, more and more it seems like i don't see that anymore in, in a lot of people yeah and then when you come across somebody that has it it's like oh wow they're okay there's somebody that has that regardless of what they're eating yeah they're just like okay there's somebody that's 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 got a little little something to them a little little spark a little spirit mm-hmm. but so many people are are losing that they're lo- you know losing their humanity right in front of our eyes and mm-hmm. And, and it's sad and so that's why we do what we do to try to put this information out there wake up a few people because mm-hmm. you know, all we can do is give folks options yeah an opportunity this is like this this book is an opportunity mm-hmm. it's like i it, it's just you know the, and this is your your invitation you can check it out and see what the information can do for you or you just go about your day and you keep on, you know, just head on down to McDonald's drive through and nothing changes and you stay and you stay blissfully ignorant, even though it's not, it's really nothing blissful about it because it leads to pain and suffering. Yeah. And, um, but, uh, but this is an amazing, we have an amazing opportunity right now. That's how I look at it. A lot of people are like, oh man, things were so much better in the past or, this and the, the the food is so compromised now and we got all the bad pollution and it's like all these extra excuses that don't help anything where i'm looking at it from a positive standpoint of yet yeah, maybe the fruit isn't as good as i would like and yeah i'll complain about the quality of fruit but i would i didn't even i didn't care less about the quality of fruit 25 years ago i didn't even think about it like that yeah so i have to understand that that that's something that will occur as more people start to demand better quality produce yeah but you know we're not not there yet right and uh but we have an amazing opportunity to have supermarkets be in an era 
where they used to be 24 hour. They're not anymore after the past couple of years, but mm -hmm. just to have supermarkets that are where you have the foods, produce from all around the world available. Mm -hmm. that you can get access to all of these different kinds of things. You couldn't do that 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. There wasn't places where you could go in and then just get, uh, there's this store called Jungle Gems in Cincinnati that I used to love to go to because they it was an international market. They had stuff from all over the world and you could go, you get these pineapples from India and wow. you know, this, this fruit from Africa and this, and I mean, all this kind of stuff, always the, the uh, durian that I had the frozen big durians just in those, in the cases and stuff. Mm -hmm. They, the, the tech, they didn't, you didn't have that years ago, you know, mm -hmm. you couldn't do that, but now that's available to everybody. And so, yeah, there's compromises there. The, the chemicals they use for the bananas and the different fruits. It's not, yeah, it's not good, but from a transitional standpoint, it's, better than anything else you know some people use that as an excuse to keep eating dead animal flesh like oh well it's yeah. so bad and this it's like yeah but that that doesn't make any sense just because the produce is compromised that you just go back to eating meat that what <laughs> right because what do you think the animals are eating i mean yeah. they're eating the same uh uh you know compromised uh roundup <laughs> type, uh, you know uh you know stuff and and even worse because they it's the stuff they get fed yeah they can listen corn and all whatever that stuff mm -hmm. and so uh you know so you're not going to get away from it all you can do is you start understanding that maybe it's time to grow your own food and right you know and then then, then the consciousness raises and uh, i just went ahead of a friend that has an urban farm and he sets up a, a space like a little self-serve kind of where you just go in and get all the produce and, and pay on the mm -hmm. honor system. And, uh, and I had just went there as he lives in a different city, but I was in that city. And so I went by and I bought a bunch of stuff mm -hmm. and I was like, man, this is amazing. <laughs> you know, it's all, it's all as organic as it can. Cause he really is. He's, it's, he's found his passion. He's really passionate about growing, just loves that. It's got that green thumb and growing the food and making it available. Mm -hmm. And that concept is because he literally just has like a regular house in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. And but his whole front yard is fruits and vegetables. Backyard is all vegetables. And uh, and, and he does that. And I it was yeah. just like, yeah, and I, I grew up with him. He's a few years younger than me. But we went to uh, this was in the same school system. Mm -hmm. And he had seen me when I had lost all that weight years ago and made that transformation. He kind of saw that. And then he ended up checking out the Mucus's diet and getting right. into raw foodism and and changing his whole his whole life. And so, right. um, but yeah, it's but that's the direction that it we would be thinking in in terms of growing our own food or having like every block. If you if somebody took their if one person even, even on one per one block, you had people that would grow the food. They could grow the food for the whole block. Yeah you know that this concept of local urban farming and that kind of and i know that's popular more popular in some places than others and it's something that's out there but it hasn't really it's not, not yet necessarily paired with this level of dietary consciousness that we're talking about here today mm -hmm. so it's, it's always a good thing when i see it but then i also like we need to get that going on a larger scale Yes. And for people that are practicing this way of life to when you because, yes, yeah, because it's, it's going to. So from that standpoint, it's it's only going to get better because as more people start to wake up, then we'll be like, yeah, we need to just we're just going to have to grow our own stuff. Exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah, that, that's it's like that takes care of that problem. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we grow a lot of fruits and things here. Mm -hmm. We're in uh, Miami. Nice. Florida. Yeah. You got mango, mango trees. Yeah. Oh yeah, we have a couple of mango trees and papayas and uh, sapodillis or sapote mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. okay. yeah, and all, all the tropical fruits. Yeah, that's yeah. what's up. Yes, yes. Well, I can talk to you all day, and I wish we can do this again because um, you have so much knowledge and history. Like we need to like you know, hear this 
more and more. Um, so do you have any uh, last remarks you would like to share with us? Uh, man, I just really appreciate your time and reaching out to me. And yeah, I would love to come back on. And everybody just, uh, if you want to find me, I'm lucasfreelife.com. I got to sign up for my newsletter and get, I have three free PDFs that we get out when you sign up the PDF, the uh, uh, top five. There's one that has recipes. One has uh, menu planning uh, discussion on how to mucus free menu plan. And then I got a top 10 favorite mucus free foods list that's on there when you sign up. So you could do that. Mucusfreelife.com. You find me on YouTube and YouTube channel. We got, uh, and my uh, Instagram, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, lively on Instagram these days, uh, prof.spira. So, uh, yeah, definitely come find me. I'll be putting out a free training, uh, a free recorded training session soon. So if you follow me and you see me announce that, then you can jump on that. It's something I've been working on for a long time. And so uh, you could jump on that. And that'll, I'll talk a little bit about the e-course and that, if that's something that you're interested in, you can go through the training and then I get into the e-course. But but yeah, no, I would love to have everybody come come find me and you yes. know, let's, let's do this thing together. Yes, wow. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, we appreciate you and your the, the knowledge that you share. And I look forward to you coming back again. All right. And what's going on, Julie? I saw you in there. Thank you <laughs> for all the, all the kind words. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. Yeah. This one, I tell my people, Thousand Roses, love yourself first because you are worth it. Peace.